We cannot allow the natural passions and prejudices of other people to lead our country to destruction. Um, I have been often to, uh, I guess, the mothership in New York City. Uh, but it's good to have an outpost of the council right here down the street from the State Department. Uh, we get a lot of advice from the council, so this will mean I won't have as far to go to uh, be told uh, what we should be doing and uh, how uh, we should uh, think about the future. The example is the array of technologies, often referred to collectively as geoengineering, that potentially could help reverse the warming effects of global climate change. One that has gained my personal attention is stratospheric aerosol injection, or SAI, a method of seeding the stratosphere with particles that can help reflect the sun's heat in much the same way that volcanic eruptions do. SAI alone would not remove greenhouse gases from the atmosphere. On the geopolitical side, the technology's potential to alter weather patterns and benefit certain regions of the world at the expense of other regions could trigger sharp opposition by some nations. Now I could go on and on and on and on about the things that fascinate me, but rather than talk about them, I thought I'd stop here. Using the crew exploration vehicle, we will undertake extended human missions to the moon. We've been there before. There's a lot more of space to explore and a lot more to learn when we do. We will then be ready to take the next steps of space exploration. Human missions to Mars. A journey to another planet a manned mission to Mars. Now, last month we launched a new spacecraft as part of a re-energized space program that will send American astronauts to Mars. It marks an important step in returning American astronauts to the moon for the first time since 1972 for long-term ex exploration and use. This time, we will not only plant our flag and leave our footprint, we will establish a foundation for an eventual mission to Mars. To Mars and perhaps someday to many and to worlds, worlds beyond. beyond. They have used the war to add unlimited billions to a debt which was already the highest we have ever known. And they have used the war to justify the restriction of congressional power and the assumption of dictatorial procedures on the part of the president and his appointees. In the early 1900s, Lionel Walter Rothschild used his Freemason connections within the British government to convince the Crown to cede the British colony of Palestine over to the Rothschild family, so they might create the Freemason outpost which today is known as the State of Israel. One of the families which intermarried with the Rothschilds was the Warburg family. Max Warburg, the Jewish King of Hamburg, self-proclaimed God of the Jews, owner of the bank M.M. Warburg, and Grand Orient Freemason, willingly chose to serve on the board of the Nazi Reichsbank under his Freemason boss, Jalmar Schacht. M.M. Warburg floated loans for Hitler's Reich. Warburg profited from a close relationship with Hitler for many years, as the atrocities against common Jews piled up before his eyes. Max Warburg shared common traits with the Jewish Nazi collaborator, George Soros. Soros happens to be a top donor for Hillary Clinton. Another Warburg who supported Hitler was Jewish Nazi scientist, Otto Heinrich Warburg. Otto continued to work alongside the likes of Dr. Mengele and the Nazi professor Eugen Fischer at the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute throughout World War II. It is quite obvious that Masons like the Rothschilds and Warburgs used the majority of Jews as pawns as they sought to create the Freemason outpost of Israel. The Rockefeller family was one of Hitler's biggest supporters, supplying him with tetraethyl lead for his aircraft through the Rockefeller-owned company, Standard Oil of New Jersey. In addition, the Rockefellers funded the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute of Anthropology, Human Heredity, and Eugenics, and provided scholarships to the likes of Dr. Mengele. In a seemingly bizarre twist of fate, the Rothschild Jews chose the Rockefeller Nazis out of billions of people on Earth as their closest allies. There is a high probability that a Freemason connection unites these two evil families. In 2012, Rothschild Capital Partners was invited to purchase a 37% stake in the private Rockefeller Wealth Advisory and Asset Management Group, a Rothschild-Rockefeller Freemason conspiracy. As far as the Clintons go, we know that Bill is a member of Demolay International. Demolay is a branch of Freemasonry based on the Knights Templar. Under Masonic oaths, a Freemason must favor other Masons over non-Masons. 
Bill Clinton is also a Rhodes Scholar. The Rhodes Scholarship was devised by white supremacist and African miner Cecil Rhodes, along with his business partner, Natty Rothschild. Today the Rothschilds handpick every Rhodes Scholar, including scumbags such as former CIA director James Woolsey, former presidential candidate and NATO Supreme Commander Wesley Clark, Council on Foreign Relations President Richard Haas, CNN Chairman and Aspen Institute President Walter Isaacson, George Stephanopoulos, author Naomi Wolf, UN Ambassador Susan Rice, Bobby Jindal, and Rachel Maddow of MSNBC. Hillary is a member of the Bilderberg Group, which was co-founded by Netherlands Prince Bernhardt and David Rockefeller. Hillary is also a member of the Council on Foreign Relations, which was founded by the Rockefeller family. Bill attended Bilderberg in 1991 as he prepared to assume the role of the U.S. puppet president. Lady Rothschild was introduced to Sir Evelyn by a close Rothschild family friend, Henry Kissinger. Lady Rothschild served on Bill Clinton's National Information Infrastructure Advisory Council from 1993 to 1995. The Rothschilds have been some of the biggest fundraisers for the Clinton campaigns over the years. Lynn Forrester Rothschild is a member of Rockefeller's Council on Foreign Relations and Chatham House. She also works for Deutsche Bank and sits on the board of the John McCain Institute. Like Hillary, Trump also has connections to the Freemason cartel. First, let's take a look at Trump's VP, Mike Pence. Pence's voting record is in line with Rockefeller objectives. Pence was pro-NAFTA, CAFTA, and TPP. David Rockefeller was the man directly responsible for NAFTA and CAFTA through his work with the Council of the Americas. Pence also supports the Patriot Act. Like so many other crooked politicians, Pence was a member of Congress during the 9-11 false flag and did his part to sell the lie concerning Iraqi involvement. He then supported the war in Iraq. 9-11 war criminal Jeb Bush recently voiced his support for Pence, saying, Pence is a good man. He will add value to the ticket. Next, you have Trump's deputy campaign manager, Michael Glasner. Glasner worked for the New York Port Authority and mysteriously quit right before the 9-11 false flag. Glasner was instrumental in helping Larry Pullet Silverstein obtain the lease on the World Trade Center complex. They planned first to prepare the United States for foreign war under the guise of American defense. Second, to involve us in the war step by step without our realization. Third, to create a series of incidents which would force us into the actual conflict. These plans were, of course, to be covered and assisted by the full power of their propaganda. Our theaters soon became filled with plays portraying the glory of war.